Hello everyone and welcome to the first preview video to the massive Steel Division 2 DLC Blood Feud in Transylvania also known as the Turda DLC as we get more Romanians and we don't just get any new reigns we get Romanians on the allied side as this DLC is timeline wise placed after the surrender of Romania to the Allies and its switch to the Allied course. And what that means you will now have three Romanians on each side. So you could play a full on 3v3 Romanian fight. We also will get one German and two Hungarian divisions. But let's jump into the first Romanian one for this video. And let's talk about Division 8 Cavalry Portata. And let's have a look onto it. And if you don't want to miss the others, consider subscribing down below so you see those videos when they come online. Well, so yeah, this is the, the Cavalry Potata. As you can see, it's a heavy infantry focus division, few tank slots, a lot of artillery, a lot of recon, good amount of infantry. So let's start, as always, with the recon tab, where you start with classic motorbikes. And a lovely ca camo scheme. I like the Romanian camos in general. This one is another nice one. And they have a radio, which is the only radio in this recon tab. So if you want to have radio for your artillery, the motorbikes are your unit to choose. Other than that, there's not much reason to take it. But you have a good amount of slots here. So if you want to fit in radios, this is an easy way too. If you want to have more MGs with a bit of armor, just a real bit of armor, not much more. It's the R1 might be your guy with its two MGs. Decent MGs, not, not great ones, but it's two of them. And you get them for 10 points, which is super cheap. You get good optics and you get eight of them, which is a lovely amount as well. So you can spam them out and make the enemy annoyed by these by just throwing so much things that they need to fire AT on against them. Um, yeah, the R1 can be a solid option if you use them correctly. Can be nice and light for us to deal with infantry that doesn't have AT or so. So I like them uh, and with the recon slots you have, they might be worthwhile taking. The Chet Chetasi are your classic two-man recon squad. Nothing special here. Transport option wise also nothing special. BMWs, Horch, Kübel and the Tatra. But nothing super fancy there. No 222s or so for these. Then the Lunatistes with Sniper Rifle, which is pretty strong um, on 2 star and like So they get more accuracy, but you pay in with numbers for them. So you don't get too many out of this card. Only 2 in A, 4 in B, 6 in C. But if you want to have normal sniper teams, this is one option. Though there is another sniper option that in my eyes might be better. The uh, Chetasi motto with an MG or with an automatic rifle, but the ZB30 is not the best one. The Panzerfaust and some rifles. Five man strength, 25 points. Ah, uh, if there would be 20 points, I would absolutely take them. But for 25 points, I don't think you want to use them. They're not really strong enough to fight, but they have. They are too expensive to not fight, which is a bit of an issue for these. So. I'd rather just take the 15 point, very high optic, uh, optic Chechitasi that just can see as much, do the recon job as well. And this, the 10 point extra don't really add up in the combat one. The Panzerfaust also not good enough to really kill tanks. Panzerfaust range, a bit too bad to be reliable. So I can't really recommend these also transports here. You get a uh, half track if you want, but nothing super special here either. Then the AB Horch, a good 20mm for you, if you want one. Nice paint job here as well. Um, yeah, the AB Horch, always a solid option. Solid availability here as well. Also relatively good veteran C curve. And yeah, in this deck you will need your 20mm armor car, as you don't get too many tanks. So this for sure is something I absolutely would take, no matter what. The question is just, do you want them really early or in B phase? I would tend to A-face with this, but yeah, that will be up to you. And then you get four cards of Kalarasi, and these have been buffed in availability in, the, in one of the latest patches. 
they before only had two availability in A. Now they have three and six and nine instead of two, four, six. So you get a good amount of them for a sniper 10 man team. We have a carabiner that is also relatively useful on the mid ranges. Relatively good weapon here as well, comparable to the uh, Hungarian rifles. And a Panzerfaust, which is solid on top as well. And that all on a relatively tanky unit. 10 man sniper squadron is always nice. So, these I would recommend taking at least two. If you want to, you can fill out your tab only with them, your one cost slots, and leave it as, as that. Like this would be a totally fine option. Though, I guess a recon s a slot like this is more. Is a bit more balanced, <laughs> but the Kalarasi are a totally fine option. Then we come to the infantry, and here you get a decent amount of choices, starting with the Ruggiori PM, which are only coming in A phase. They only come in the fort. They're an eight-man squadron with a PTRD. You can see the Soviet influences here coming in, which is quite helpful for 20-point units. PTRD is Pretty nice, 2 MGs is pretty nice as well, 8 hit points, obviously not amazing, but 2 automatic rifles and 5 decent rifles, making these, I would say, pretty solid choice, with 9 availability, 6 still fine on 1 vet, so you, you can up vet them. So I think this is a unit you take, you only have 1 card of them, so um, yeah, your infantry choices there are mostly based around Rogiori later on. Pioneer, Kalari with Berettas, really nice as well. You, a really solid pioneer unit. Two GBs, two Berettas, 25 points. This is an amazing pioneer. Also, availability at the moment really high. Uh, that might still obviously be subject to change as all of this is an alpha build. <laughs> yeah, so Pioneer Kalari. I would expect them to go down in availability but the price might stay and then this is maybe one of the best pioneers ever as yeah 30 points might be a bit too much so i think 25 is fine just the availability i would expect to be changed till launch but currently this is a really really strong unit and it will stay one as well two berettas already a really nice addition to any pioneer squad and then two automatic rifles and six decent rifles for cqc giving this a insane amount of firepower in the short range plus you have a bit of extra firepower on the long range as well like the mid-range firepower here is not too too bad either so all around really strong pioneer squad and then rogiori having a beretta as well having two gbs for 25 points on a 10-man squadron if it only would be one gb this would not be great but with two gbs and the beretta and the carabina these are pretty good on the short range and also decent on the long range with this combo, like at 500 meter, thanks to the Carabina, they are doing a de decent amount of damage, so it's a super solid option as well, especially as they come on really high availability as well, with 12.8 uh, or 24.16 or 32.21, so even, uh, yeah, this, this unit is really, really good as well. Then the Vanatori de Garda coming in here as the specialized unit, which changes the Berettas out for four Bergmann, two extra men, having a bit weaker weaponry in general, as you can see. They have the worst rifles, they have the worst MG, uh, SMGs, but they have a lot more, and they are two men more, so a solid option as well. You get a couple less of them, but they also add the fanatical trait on top of that. And the two extra hit points, I would say, equalize it at the minimum. Maybe make them even better. So a solid option here as well. Some really decent infantry so far. Kalarizi Moto with two MG42, also a good option. 30-point unit, but they are basically your Panzer Commanders. Like, they are same loadout, only that their arena is slightly better than the uh, MP40 of the Germans. But in general, basically Panzer Grenadiers with AT grenade, no Panzer Faust on these, but that is fine. As they have decent availability as well, or really good availability as well at the moment. Um, obviously, as I said, subject to change, 
but you get a lot of options here as well and you can choose quite a bit of this outside of the pioneer and the rogiori pm you get a good availability on all the other units and the rogiori pm being so cheap gives you a nice 20 point unit for a phase as well which is always helpful if you only have to rely on 25 point unit stacks can be a bit clunky in the early game i feel like but yeah you have really your five basic infantry here are really nice and then you also get rogiori assault which are a pretty decent 30 point units as well four berettas eight carabiner and a molotov so 30 points so they're not completely busted. If they would be 25 points, they would be really, really strong. But still, a unit worthwhile considering for the pushes. <laughs> Though I would say the Rosiori's actually come somewhat close in firepower to this. Though they have two men less. The 12 men really makes this worthwhile. The Rosiori Assault. And four Berettas are no joke. So, yeah, a solid unit here as well. Availability here, decent. And then you get four different leader options. Starting with the Calorisi Moto, 30 points for a 3 point hit point squadron, not the best leader, I wouldn't recommend. The two MP44s don't do anything, price here might change, but yeah, availability is decent, but nothing special, so this is something you can consider, but I wouldn't recommend them too, too highly. Then the Lieutenant Rogioris, 3 Berettas. Smoke and Panzerfaust. Three Berettas way better loadout than two MP44s and a Rita. Because they all only fire at the short range and then they actually do some damage there. So maybe a bit more worthwhile. Next one next one being the Monotory Dagada leaders. With five Bergmann, one naval granate. So yeah, also the smoke. But the, the, the fancy part about these is the extra hit points. So yeah, that's why I would take them. And then the Pioneer Kalari, River Beretta, Carabina, and Panzer Shrek, but 35 points. So the leader's all relatively pricey. Uh, I would go with this, but you only get one of car or two cards of these, both on Edo. Um, yeah, if you want to have more leaders, I guess I would go with these in B. So this one in A, this one in B gives you n nine leaders. But fitting in two leaders cards will, could be tough, so a total leader most likely will be the option together with this one. As five men leaders are quite nice, and they only reveal, reveal themselves below 100 meters, so that is fine too. Though the Bergmann is a pretty bad SMG. Tank, you get an interesting combo of Hungarian tanks, all of all things. You get a Turin 2 and a Shrini 2 as... These are the captured tools from the Hungarians, but you only get them in A. So you see, tanks in this deck are hard to come by, but you get at least some. And yeah, we haven't seen the Shrini 2 in multiplayer yet. It's a decent weapon. It gets a 100mm penetration heat shell and a pretty good HE shell. 6 rounds per minute. 6 rounds per minute are fine. Nothing super fancy, but... Yeah, those things are decent. So, 70 points. Frontal armor is good, 105mm. Um, that combo with 100mm penetration for 70 points is really good. I would say, like, against Shermans and against T-34s, you are pretty well set up. And the HE shells doing good amount of damage is helping out as well. So, you will take these bo both of these. Uh, the Veteran C, also something that you can decide upon. At least on this one. I would actually maybe recommend you... I would go with this. With 3 star and CS. They get a good boost out of it. And the 30 base accuracy is a bit lackluster. So at least going with 37. Uh, I would say is, is a good way to dealing with this. And then you don't lose too, too much either. But yeah. it's This tank tap is... You're gonna take them all. There's no choices here really. As... These tanks are necessary, and they are solid. Then, the support tab. You get a Breda, you get your classic military police unit, you, though you don't need them here. And the Gendarmi. You don't really need them in this support tab, so I wouldn't recommend taking them. Schwalose or ZB-53. I tend to the Schwalose as it's really cheap. Then, the Hotchkiss. 13mm, 
a really heavy machine gun for 40 points, if you want to go with that. Good amount of damage, and but yeah, you don't, and good amount of suppression, but it's a really expensive one, so I and a really low rate of fire, so I don't know if you really want to use that. The Hotchkiss, the good old French machine gun. Um, yeah, I would tend to the Schwallows, and then the Breda AC in the support tab this time, really high rate of fire. Solid AP shell in the support version, you don't get too many of those, but you get a lot of E shells instead, and that is fine as well. And then you get the Tatra commander, which I wouldn't take, the four man command unit, which is fine, I guess, and then maybe a half track commander if you want that. I would go with the infantry commander though, out of these smoke and yeah, can hide better than the others. So, and these both. Don't have super high speed or anything that makes them worthwhile above it. So, yeah, the infantry commander would be my choice in this in this tab. <laughs> Anti tank tab wise, you have Panzer Trex, you have Vanatori Dekari <laughs> with TNT with a Panzer Shrek. Um, so really solid unit as well. TNT plus Panzer Shrek on a seven man squadron can be good in a bulge of infantry to keep. Tanks away from it, and then help out with the TNT in infantry fights. You get only one card, I would recommend taking that. You get a lot of anti-tank slots in this step. And you get a bit of tank art in this here as well. As you yeah, get your M42, so more Soviet intercept uh, support here. Four cards of these, at least, actually, even. Schneider, a pretty solid anti-tank gun as well. But you only get them with AP shells here. Um... Yeah, so really high rate of fire, 70mm of penetration, range is an issue here, same range as the M42, and you don't get the APCR shells or anything like that, but the high rate of fire makes them somewhat helpful. So, yeah, maybe Schneider could be worthwhile as well. It can come on the Malaxa Ue, which is an interesting little transport as well. Um, yeah. So, nice paint job on this one as well. Then the Pack 38s, uh, which are the standard Pack 38s. You have APCR shells on these. Takam R2, though, that is the hot one. Pretty little Takam. With AP shells, with HE shells, and 105mm of penetration with the SIS 3 gun in it is decent too. Uh, so,. Nice penetration, Not, nothing super amazing as a tank destroyer, but they are also pretty cheap. And the HE shells are quite helpful as well. 1500 meter range, 45% accuracy, so really nothing super fancy here. But you get them in good amount of numbers and you need armored vehicles here. So I would recommend taking them, though the two best options in this deck come down below it. Two cards of Regidas is the start, you can get them at forts. Two cards of Regidas already really, really nice, especially as you get the slots for it. And then you also get one card of Jagdpanz uh, 38Ts in A phase. So these two cards here really help you dealing with tanks, with enemy armor. And that is highly necessary because your tanks obviously don't quite do that. They are pretty helpful at dealing with light armor and with infantry. But these two are your two heavy anti-tank options. The heaviest of heavy tanks you can't quite penetrate, but everything up to Tigers, Panthers, and T-3485s, these two can deal with, and that is really, really helpful that you get that in this anti-tank tab. So, a really competitive anti-tank tab, one of the best in the game, I would say, with the Vanatori Dikari, with the Regidas, with the Yak Panzers, and then two decent options here as well. So, yeah, a really nice one here. Anti-air is really versatile as well, plot-wise. Also decent, not amazing, but decent. You get Bofors, you get a card of Hotchkiss. The Hotchkiss 13mm I wouldn't recommend, neither would I recommend the Gustav in this one. The German 20mm Flak 38 is not that amazing. And then you get the Vickers 75mm, which also has AP shells with 1750m range and decent penetration, so can help out with anti-tank a bit as well. And they are pretty good at dealing with planes 
as well, as they have a high rate of fire. The accuracy is a bit <laughs> low, as always, on these big guns, but with the high rate of fire, they get accurate relatively quickly, and if you get leaders next to them, they can actually be somewhat lethal against enemy planes, these 75mm. And together with the bow force and the 25mm, you have a good loadout for the first four slots with these four, if you want to go that deep into AA. Artillery is a decent tap as well. You have the off map, you have your classic two infantry options here, a spotter and an artillery leader. Mortars, you have the classic Romanian 60mm mortars as well, which can be absolutely spam and annoying with really high availability and really high rate of fire. These things can be super obnoxious. You have two artillery options that are decent, especially this one I like quite a bit. 100mm, really good rate of fire. The Škoda model 1934 has also radio, so the artillery observers, the um, BMWs or in the infantry tab, these Garda leaders, one more reason to take the Garda leaders, can be quite helpful for these um, to get more accurate. The 120 and the 81mm mortars, yeah, I wouldn't recommend them taking in this tab, but these artillery pieces, the 60mm and the off-map, absolutely worthwhile, and you get a good amount of slots here as well. And then in the air tab, you start with JU-88D1 recon planes. Not the fastest, but relatively cheap, and you at least get two of them. Um, you get another recon option, which also has two, which is even slower, but has a bit more firepower, as it has two 20mm. So this actually can deal with enemy planes if they are not careful. The HS129, though obviously with its agility being mediocre and its speed being mediocre as well, it it's not doing that too amazingly. Then you have a couple of JU-87 options, also all in lovely paint jobs. Good job on that one, Eugen. I love the Romanian paint jobs. Um, a D3 or a D5. The D3 with 250, the D5 with its 220mm, always helpful. Don't take head-ons against D5s with if your fighter doesn't have a good damage output. With also, four extra 50 kilogram bombs. They are not the biggest differentiator, but yeah, five points extra. Availability is the same. HS129. I don't like these as bombers at all. Um, lots of six 50 kilogram bombs is not a good loadout, so wouldn't recommend this, especially not with this availability curve. Then a BF109 G2, which is a fast fighter, but other than that, not the greatest in all the other regards. So. Yeah, a good hunter, but if you want to have damage, you get the G4 R6 with three 20mm and two 7mm, uh, which really has a good damage output and also has a decent speed. So the G4 R6, really good fighter. Highly recommend this one. You only get one card though, so in a good air slap uh, tap, you might want to take both as the availability here is nice. You have a higher amount of fighters. And then you have two clusters as well. So dealing with tanks got a bit easier here. The GH7D3 and the HS129 clusters. I would recommend the D3 over the HS, as it's cheaper, a good amount, and you get better availability. And the slightly extra sp speed on the HS129, uh, on the GH7D3 is also helpful. Though, the HS129 can survive a bit of fire, but its agility is also not good enough to get out, usually, and it is also getting stressed out, so then, at this point, its clusters are not too amazing, and the clusters of the D3, I think, also deal slightly more damage, so I'm not quite sure about that. Then, two big bomber options, a J87, uh, 88 a 4 with four 250kg bombs, and one with 16 more 50 kilogram bombs on top. I would highly recommend taking the two, uh, with the one with only four 250 kilogram bombs, as 25 points are not worthwhile for the 50 kilogram bombs. The 250 kilogram bombs already do the damage. Also, take them in B. As you can see, the availability jump here from A to B is massive. So bring them in in B and use them if you play the stack balanced or so. 
Yes, these are decent bombers, the GO88s. A bit slow, but good agility. And the bomb loadout here is nice as well. So a really solid air tap as well. The G4 R6 as a really solid fighter. The JO88s as good heavy bombers, clusters as good anti-tanks. And then some okay light bombers as well. And two recon planes that are both worthwhile considering. So in general, a nice finish to a really lovely deck. Obviously, tanks will be your problem. But you have the support in the anti-tank to deal with enemy tanks, you have the cluster bombers, you have a good artillery tap, and you have really good infantry. Even if these might get nerfed a bit in availability, the damage, the loadout they have is already pretty nice. So Romanians, for sure, will be having another nice option here. On the allied side, in the first division here, it's already looking hot, and I can't wait for the Platfield and Turda DLC. I, I hope it is the same for you. And as I said, if you want to see more, consider subscribing so you see the other videos when they go online. And with that said, thanks for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye and have a nice day.